All right, back again, Luke here. And as you can see in front of you, today we are trying to work on a main event PCB. This is the main event that you might have seen in a couple other videos where it was kind of making some strange sounds and, uh, yeah, not showing a display. Uh, as you can see right now, there is uh, another issue here. It's trying to display, uh, but it's in a reboot or it's in a, a constant watchdog. But um, that is because of this uh, 74LS245. Now, if I piggyback a 74LS245 here onto a good working one onto this bad one, we should get this thing to boot. You can hear that. Now, that one is booting now. Uh, so I have to replace that one and there are a couple of other ones here That I still haven't been able to find out which are responsible for the sink and uh, No matter what I do here to try and get the sink adjusted. I'm just not able to do it I've gone over most of these uh, TTL chips just checking and some of them have like intermittent issues like uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Which ones in particular like this uh, 367 I believe it is um, 367 I can't get any Anything as far as the outs on it It's got nothing it does have some inputs. Oh, I did a couple of times Where is it? There that one's held low that one's held low I need to figure out where these are. That one's actually uh, pulsing, which is good. That's pulsing. That LS174 seems to be pulsing for the most part, but I need to find out where this is connected to, this 367, and see if I can figure out what's going on with this to get it up and working. Because it does play, it just plays blind. Well, I mean, pseudo blind right now, but that's where we're at. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can do some more troubleshooting. I'm gonna have to replace this one, like I said and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll see you guys here in a little bit. Okay, so after replacing this 74LS245 and the one next to it, just because they're both related to the video section. If you guys remember, the video section is one that I've worked on before in the past and uh, tried to see if I could figure out. But uh, after replacing these two, I can now get this thing to boot up. without uh, any problems there, but uh, still the video sync is off. If I mess with the sync just a little bit, you know, I can get it to kind of come in, but uh, it's still, that's the best we're gonna get with the video sync on this one, so. Still have a couple more things to try and figure out here, but, uh, Hopefully getting there. At least it's firing up every time now. There's so many different Fujitsu uh, TTLs on this board and those are usually the, the biggest problems. So uh, we might have to go through each one and see uh, you know what's going on here. But like I mentioned before, some of these are getting uh, power and some of them aren't. I'm gonna go back over this one more time and see what we can figure out. So see you in a bit. Okay, so after a bit of probing here and a little bit of hunting, I was able to find the culprit. Um, the area here is really responsible for the video. This is a lot of the main video section. Uh, these two RAM chips, if they go bad, you'll get no video, as well as this Konami Custom 051550 is also responsible for the video section here. Uh, these two resistor arrays are responsible for brightness and darkness of it. But there are also a couple of ICs over here, which I thought might might have been bad uh, that were Fujitsu TTLs that are responsible for the image, the video image. Uh, when I tried to replace these here, I was able to see the image kind of flash, but then it went back to the original uh, problem that we were having before. In a nutshell, I found the problem and it was this 74LS07 and it was located at G16. Once I replaced this, uh, the video came back and uh, everything is working fine. So I'll go ahead and pop this on here and show you some of that. As you can see, now we've got our ROM RAM check. Everything comes back 
and we've got our graphics here. So, yeah, just the final shot there was that 74 LS 07. Much better now that we can see uh, what this looks like. You know, before it was just kind of a guessing game, but uh, yeah, it's back in action. So, this is another board here, saved from the grave. If you guys are experiencing any trouble with uh, Konami main event PCB, might want to take a look at some of the TTLs that are around near the front here, uh, especially like uh, this. Uh, 74 LS07, the 174, around this area here, these are all kind of similarly related. Uh, sound section is uh, related up here as well as down here. These are some of the sounds for the game. But uh, yeah, it is up and running. So very awesome to have this thing back in action. Okay, so I went online here to see if I could find some dip switch settings for this game, and I was lucky enough to actually come across the main PDF. So, looking through it, I realized that this game can't be put into free play mode. You actually have to have at least one coin in to start it up. But as I was looking down here, I realized that it had a test mode. So, if we go to bank three and we flip up uh, dip switch three, I believe that's up there. Should be up. Not dip switch two. We'll leave that one down. All right. Flip this on here. And uh, this one is a bit more in depth than some of the other Konami uh, checks. It'll go through the ROM character check. And then after this, it will. Let's see here. If we press the second button, it'll go to our screen check, color check. And then it will allow you to check all the buttons here uh, up, down, left, right. Uh, we have our tag button. If we press the action button for number one, it'll actually jump to the next screen. But uh, we can also test player two's controls. Left, right, up, down, left, right, uh, action, and tag. The thing about this, however, is it has individual coin settings. So uh, for player two, you have to have a separate coin uh, set up. But uh, I think I have an idea for that. We're going to try and wire the uh, coin one, coin two together. That way we can at least check those ones. And the other thing is these are player three and four connectors. So those are gonna be individual uh, coin ends and all of the different buttons. Since I don't have anything connected there, we can't really test that. But if we go on to our next page here, I'll check the coin, coin counter check, shows you the dip switches and everything that's connected to it and how the settings are. Uh, all the sound checks, there's a ton of these, I think there's, if you press it all the way, uh, or if you press button two on uh, the first one here, you can skip through it to 96 and then it'll jump back into here. So this is really cool. I guess that the start button is not used for starting this game. So what we'll do is uh, take a look down here and we'll try to, uh, what is it, maybe splice in a small wire for player number one and two coin in. And that way when we go to put coin in, so we can, uh, coins in, we can put it in for player one and player two and play those without having to make an adapter or anything like that. So that's what I'm going to do here and I'll see you guys in a few minutes. So this is going to be a little tricky to see, but uh, in between the 051550 uh, IC, you can see these two pins. This is going to be for player one coin in, and this is player two coin in. So what I'm going to do is, I, I just scraped away a bit of this solder mask here, and I'm going to use a piece of NAR wire, and we'll just bridge that uh, over. We'll just kind of use like a small thin piece here, and we'll bridge this over there. And that way we should be able to get both coin ends at the same time. So it's gonna be a little tricky to do with the camera here. So I'll do this off camera and I'll see you guys in a couple seconds. Okay, so I'm not sure how well you can see that there, but I've put a small little bridge wire between those two points, and that should be enough to get us our player one and player two coin in. So without further ado, let's uh, pop this on and check some of that. Oh, shoot. Well, before we do that, let's make sure that we turn the test off. <laughs> it's going to be a totally different situation here. We just go through test mode again and again. Okay, so you should be able to see, where is it, up in the top corner. Okay, let's try and put in some coins. There's one and two, as you guys can see there. One and two, both coining up, which is great. 
And let's hit our button one, or is it button two? Button two looks like seems to be the one to start it up. And player two, button two, player one. We still haven't chosen our character here. Hulk Hogan. So this should be good, hopefully. Uh, let's see, is player two the first one in? Yeah, player two is the first one in here. Get out of it, well, get out of it. Ah, <laughs> this is impossible with one hand. Ah, can we tag? Let's see if we can tag in. There we go. Yeah, so it looks like uh, the game is working okay. Okay, so I realized something here by bridging these two pins for the coin in for player one and player two. It meant that every time you put in coins for player one, you would have to press start for player two. You couldn't just play this game solo. So what I'm going to do instead is I've got another idea. I'm going to put in a toggle switch to turn player one and player two coin, uh, coin in on and off. That way, if you just want to play one player, you can do that. If you want to play two player, you can just flip the switch. And I think that's going to help out a lot more. So we're going to go ahead and switch this up just a little bit. No pun intended, but uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. So as you can see here, what I've done is I've taken the two spots down here and I've soldered them to these two posts here. Uh, this will be on one player and when I flip it over to the right, it'll be on two. So I'm going to use some hot glue to affix it to this custom chip and hopefully this will stay in place and we won't have to worry about this. it will be able to easily switch between one and two uh, coin in. So let's go ahead and glue that in. Okay, so as you can see here, I've uh, fixed this switch down with some hot glue and I've made a couple of labels for this. Probably this label needs to be stuck down a bit more. But uh, when you flip the switch to the left, it'll be one player. When you flip it to the right here, uh, this will be two. So I haven't had a chance to test this out and I figured we'll go ahead and give it a shot, but uh, that's the way I've got it mounted as of right now. So first of all, let's uh, flip the switch on and check out uh, one player, see how that works. Okay, as you can see, we've got one coin going in, no problem, and if we flip our switch over here to two, that should be, there we go, there's our two player one. So, obviously if you have it set to two player, uh, it's going to consistently be uh, two player. You're going to have to flip it back over to one after player two, uh, you know, dies, but there we go. So yeah, seems to be working okay here with the uh, the one player and the two player coin in switch. But a uh, little bit of an idea there for anybody who's thinking about putting in uh, one player or two player. Not so difficult and uh, it, it makes it a little bit easier to switch back and forth I think. But uh, as for the other players, you'll have to go through these coin ins here. But uh, yeah, there we go. I think that right now we can say that this one is pretty good. But just wanted to share a bit of a look at some of the repairs and different uh, modifications I've made to this board here. And hopefully if you guys are having any trouble, especially with the last one, uh, the Video Sync, where is it? Over here, the 74LS07. Maybe check that and see if that fixes your sync issues. But that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So thanks for watching. Go for it.